this time out or this break, it's like when you pull up at the beach, and I'm picturing Clavelli Car Park, for all those that don't know, it looks out over the ocean. You pull on the handbrake and you just sit, maybe wind the windows down and just look out there. Just take a take a moment. Just it's, yeah. it's giving us all a deep breath. It's giving us all just a, a moment of, of calm. I, I know that I say that as someone without without dependence. <laughs> and for the people <laughs> who are watching this with children, they're like, it's not the calm, Rob. And one of the things about parenting is the more calm we are, the more calm our kids unconsciously take on board from us. So as they get you know a bit more you know rambunctious, if we wire up our anxiety more around that, then then that feeds that same process. Whereas if we choose to do what you just said, which is press pause, find that calm, be be the calm calm version. I'm not saying it's I'm not saying it's going to work and going to stop the kids from running around and from needing to do because kids need to let off energy. But if you're calmer, you'll probably be more creative in the way that you deal with that. If both you and your partner are working from home or not working from home, as the case may be, then negotiating the rules around responsibility so that both of you get space and time to do what you've just said, to take out, to pause. And starting those long form conversations, maybe? Yeah, look, absolutely. I actually give, give my couple of clients that sort of thing. I call it a, a, the check-in process. And, and essentially it's really good for parents as well, because often something will happen between them, but the kids are around. So there's not, it's not the right time to talk about it. When you do that, you have the conversation. Really the question is, how do we do better? How do I make you feel more loved? Mm. And your question to me is, how do you make me feel more loved? So it's not about, I'm going, here's what you did and you should have done this and why didn't you do this? It's not that conversation. When you come from that calm, respectful place and you have that conversation, which is when you did this, and it's not when you did this and made me feel, because that's just called, I, you know, I know that's pop psychology. When you did this and made me feel blah, well, that just sounds like I'm blaming you, which guess what you are. But if you say, now, when you did this, here's what I made it mean. And I'm really curious, like, you know, what was your intention in that moment? Or is it possible that we can renegotiate that rule because, you know, ignoring me when you're frustrated just really frustrates me and makes me push harder against you and yell louder, which mm. is, and I know that's on me, but maybe we can negotiate the rules calmly and respectfully and empathetically as a team.